What's up, everybody? Welcome to In Love With Horror, your destination for all things horror, and this is your end of the week news update. Now, in this video, we'll be talking about the SAG After Strike and how it, it has finally come to an end. We'll be talking about the upcoming horror film Night Swim and how it got its rating. Uh, we'll be talking about a lot of the upcoming delays that uh, have been talked about as a result of the strike ending, uh, some good news for Fear Street fans, and then finally, we'll give you the box office update before we lead into a new box office weekend. All that coming up, stay tuned. So first on our list, we got the SAC after strike and how it has finally come to an end, y'all. So a tentative agreement has been reached that includes protections around AI, a significant bump in wages, a new pay model when it comes to streaming residuals as well were included among other things. In a contract valued at over $1 billion, we have achieved a deal of extraordinary scope that includes minimum compensation increases, provisions for consent and compensation that will protect members from the threat of AI, and a streaming participation bonus. In addition, the deal includes numerous improvements for multiple categories, including outsized compensation increases for background performers and critical contract provisions protecting diverse communities. Uh, of course, more details will be released once it has been reviewed by the SAC after national board. But this is incredible news um, for literally everybody, you know, yeah. of course, for, you know, the actors, because uh, a lot of things, uh, you know, of course, the biggest thing was AI. AI, it, right. Like AI will only get better, right? AI is already crazy. Like, mm -hmm. We're already seeing like videos where they can imitate people, you know, saying stuff and even looks exactly like them. Yeah. So it's only going to get better and scarier from here and the fact that you know hollywood was trying to essentially you know you know their their goal is to be as cheap as possible right absolutely. so they're like oh we can just fill in everything with ai these background actors these voices all that stuff like they're trying to get real crazy with this right. shit and you know honestly like you know we already they already we already talked about you know um the writers guild and yeah. a lot of those things that came from ai right. too yeah exactly. sometimes some of these some of these scripts be seem like oh. so written by ai but how bad <laughs> some of the stuff are. probably are. yeah but um but you know it's good to hear that we get, that actors will get that that level of protection i mean all these things were mm -hmm. uh incredible here i'm i'm glad that uh, especially people will be compensated yes. as they should. Um, right. And, you know, people don't realize this a lot of times, but like, you know, of course the big name actors get big paydays, right. but, but a lot of smaller times. people, background actors, all that stuff, they don't get. That's right. Nothing. Yep. They, they really don't. They yeah. struggling out here. So it's good that they'll get, you know, compensated fairly among other improvements. And hopefully, you know, these things, like as it says, you know, a tentative agreement, hopefully uh, it only, it stays permanent, but only gets better for from here. Right. And continues to protect actors and pay them uh, fairly. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add with the with the news of the strike ending and, you know, um, the the SAG after it really kind of getting what they set out to get from the Yeah, from the I'm beginning. super glad for them. Um, I'm proud that they held out for as long as they did yeah. in order to get what they really wanted. I think I saw in one article where, um, I don't know if it was Bob Iger, but it was one of them. The, one of those big CEOs, they were mm -hmm. like, oh, we didn't just meet you halfway. Like we came all the way to you because they know that they can't do any of the things that they want to accomplish can't. without these people. They can't. So they have to kind of like meet their demands. Yep. So um, kudos to all of those who held out and, you know, was at the picket lines and doing what they needed to do. That's right. And um, supporting that. But um, also the, but the AI thing I saw where they said that they were going to be like, uh, reviewing things like every two years because like we both had said earlier that AI is going to continue to evolve. It will. And yep. of, obviously they're going to want to try to like Sneak use stuff it. In. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying. <laughs> hey, some look, kind of way. They sneak it and they greet it. Exactly. They're going to try to sneak it in. So they, yeah, they're going to be gonna reviewing happen. this consistently to make yep. sure that they're not, you know, working outside of those original mm -hmm. parameters. So, yep. but yeah. I'm super hyped. I'm, I'm glad for them. Also glad that they're able to get back to work, get back to doing what they want to do. And then also we, you know, we get to start seeing some of the things that we, we missed. Yes. So yeah, I'm, yeah. it's great all around. All around. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about that later in this video about a lot of the things that have been discussed yeah. as a result. This finally ending all the studios and everything are scrambling. Right. Like, all right, this is things we got going on. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we're talking about a lot of that stuff, especially delays uh, later on in this video. Now our next story, y'all night swim has been rated PG 13. 
2018. Uh, now, Night Swim is an upcoming horror movie being brought to the big screen by Atomic Monster and Blumhouse uh, with Universal. It's being written and directed by Bryce McGuire and produced by James Wan. The film follows a family who awakens a terrifying supernatural presence in the backyard swimming pool of their new home. And uh, the rating of PG-13 is for terror, some violent content and language. Now, Night Swim is coming to theaters January 5th, 2024. They already put out kind of like a little teaser trailer because uh, there wasn't a whole lot to the trailer, but it definitely told you kind of what the the basic premise, yeah. premise was. Um, you got issues with this trailer. <laughs> well, with the part, the Marco oh, Polo part. Wait, oh, yeah, because it was like, yeah, because... Anybody really planned it to that. She was way too serious about this Marco Polo <laughs> game. The dude already was cheating because he won't say in Polo, but she was really kept yeah. going, kept her eyes closed, everything. I'm like, come on. Now. Like, <laughs> no one's that committed to Marco Polo, y'all. Come on now. She was definitely committed. Right. She was committed. Um, but I mean, this rating of PG-13 doesn't really surprise me too much. Right, yeah. A lot of times things be, be are being rated PG-13 because they're trying to get as many people in the seats as they can and this PG-13 makes it easier for people to get in mm -hmm. without parental supervision and so on. Um, now, one thing I wanted to point out is that this movie's coming out in January of next year. Yeah. You know, typically January is the month where they kind of dump, you know, horror movies that aren't as good. So now I'm kind of wondering, like, you know, will this be one of the ones where it's a, an exception to the rule or will this movie end up being, you know, bad? Because typically January is the, uh, that generic ass whatever type of horror movie we dumping that in january just because by, by the time we get halfway through the year people will have forgotten about the trash that came out in the beginning of the year so hopefully this doesn't fall victim to that uh, but what do you think about the rating and uh are you excited for night swim i wouldn't say i'm excited for the movie it's not i mean i watched the trailer and it's not really like something that's really gotten my you know attention to say oh yeah i really want to see this but right. um I'm not like like you said earlier. I'm not surprised by the rating. I think it kind of fits the type of story it is. Um, right. Yeah. You know, we're not expecting like a gore fest of anything. No, nah, I doubt like that. it. I doubt it. So um, I think it's fine. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not really feeling it right now. Mm -hmm. I just I want to see some more another trailer maybe, and maybe that'll yeah. help out. But um, like I guess the trailer seems very like simple right now. Yeah. Like you don't really understand like how they're going to expand this story outside of the pool. Right. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at right now. But I mean, I want to be hyped for it because it's being produced by James Wan. And I, you know, I like the way he approaches horror, but he's not directing. So I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. yeah and that's funny because and we, cause we just, you know, went to the movies today and watched It's a Wonderful Knife. And they had the trailer for this. And one thing I thought about in the trailer, because, you, you know, James Wan is a producer on here. Yeah. And in the trailer, it says, from James Wan, the producer of The Nun. I thought that was an interesting <laughs> movie to pick, you know, because he's done yeah. a yeah. lot of great other things. Yeah. So I was kind of surprised, like, of all the movies that he's either directed or worked on, did they pick The Why Nun? Why that one? Yeah. That was, I thought that was an odd choice to <laughs> uh, but i don't know y'all uh night swim rated pg-13 coming january 5th 2024 let us know down in the comments how excited you are for night swim and if you think that it's going to fall victim to the usual trap of january being the dumping grounds for <laughs> bad horror movies now in our next story y'all we'll be talking about some of the upcoming horror projects that have been announced as being delayed and these discussions of course came as a result of the end of the sack after strike so all the studios are scrambling and talking about a lot of their upcoming projects and uh three of them uh, are the upcoming alien series venom 3 and welcome to dairy so these have all been announced as being delayed and we'll be uh, talking about each one of those starting with F fx's alien which is being directed by noah hawley uh, is expected sometime in 2025 and during an interview with the rap hawley stated the plan right now is to go back in January and be shooting in February and it looks like sh uh, shooting until July or so, which will, which will put the air date somewhere in the first half of 2025. Wow. Okay. Yep. So, you know, this, this, and I think you had mentioned it but, uh, earlier while we were, you know, talking about uh, the show that, you know, they're saying that the effects of this strike will be felt for, for months. Mm -hmm. So y'all expect a lot of these little updates of delays happening for the next few months. Uh, they announced more projects uh, getting affected. Uh, and the next, uh, the next movie was Venom 3. Now, Sony's Venom 3 was originally slated for July 2024, and it's now being pushed back to November 8th, 
2024. Uh, currently, there are no plot details regarding the film, but we do know that Tom Hardy is expected re to return, of course, and it will be directed by Kelly Marshall, who also uh, wrote this film and, and as well as wrote the first two uh, Venom films. So um, I, I think it's always cool when people who have helped you know, write or work on a movie, get the chance to sit in the director's mm -hmm. seat. Sometimes that works out really good. Sometimes it doesn't work out that good. But I, yeah. I think it's cool when someone who's really involved with the project gets the opportunity right. to put their to put their stamp on it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes that works out good, but we'll see. Uh, and then lastly, we talked about we're talking about uh, Welcome to Dairy. This is the uh, the HBO you know Max uh, series that's coming. A prequel series uh, to it, of course. Now, CEO Casey Bloys confirmed at a press event that Welcome to Dairy would also be delayed. It was originally expected to stream in October of 2024, but it now will be pushed back to 2025. Uh, so this is a recurring theme. A lot of stuff from, that was coming out in 2024 now being pushed back to 2025. Okay. You know, that, that's, it's going to suck for 2024, but... I feel like once 2025 hits, <laughs> we're going we to we have a lot of shit to watch. Like It's yeah. going to be crazy. So 2025 is going to end up being an insane year, I'm sure. Uh, kind of like what we saw with like the pandemic, right? After the pandemic ended, we had this like onslaught of a lot of oh, yeah. projects True. from, you know, movies, TV shows to video mm -hmm. games. Like it was crazy. Um, but what do you think about some of these, uh, these, these three de delays that were announced? Uh, and then is there anything else you want to add in general about the potential for any, anything else that might be upcoming uh, for, uh, uh, for delays regarding, you know, different projects? Yeah. Well, like you said, I, I didn't expect there to be such, you know, extensive delays. I knew that there would be some, um, you know, but I mean, two whole years it seems like you know for mm -hmm. some stuff um but at the same time there's it's good news to see people getting back to work like i said yeah. earlier um you know they, yeah these ones are delayed but some of them you know we're starting to get back to traction like beetlejuice 2 for example right um so i mean it's just it's good news it's mm -hmm. it's sad at the same time because you know like things are going to be a little bit time um a way to get them i was really excited about that welcome to dairy show like oh yeah because i was really looking forward to that maybe they put out someone put out those I like know. set photos oh yeah stuff like it, it was looking cool. really good yeah so um it is a little bit disappointing but also it's like we, what can you do mm -hmm. <laughs> so can't do nothing about can't do anything it. but wait you know but i'm excited that we're actually getting um that they're getting back to work and able to start working on these projects so i don't know that's it yeah, yeah, no, it's it's gonna be crazy, y'all. I'm I'm nervous to see what else is gonna be affected by yeah. uh, the announcement of these delays. We'll definitely keep our eye on and keep y'all updated. Um, but you know, hey, I'm all for stuff being delayed if that means like it's it gets more time and more love and yeah, attention for sure. to come out and be really good. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. This is the first you know onslaught of announcements. Get ready for more. I'm I'm sure. Now, in our next story, y'all. It's all about Fear Street and how it might be getting a standalone movie. So it looks like Netflix is looking to expand the Fear Street franchise with a standalone film. Now, during a uh, recent interview, the head of Netflix film, uh, Scott Studer, s stated, obviously, there's a lot of books. There's one standalone that we're working on right now that we're once again trying to get the script right. But I like it very much. And so does the team. So I feel like we can get the script uh, right, there would be a great kind of extension of that franchise. So it sounds like he wants to branch out from the main from the main trilogy that is already there and expand on it. Now, of course, you know Fear Street. Um, you know Netflix put out that uh, that trilogy series. Mm -hmm. I think it was like one movie came out uh, one week after each yeah. release, um, which is a very interesting it concept. Like to have like these three films that were complete and then release on like a weekly basis. It was really cool. I, I actually kind of enjoyed the trilogy yeah it was um, good to me i loved yeah, it yeah yeah uh so it's cool that they're potentially expanding on this universe uh now along with the expansion of fair street stuber also stated that he'd like to see netflix create its own iconic horror character reminiscent of like a michael myers or freddy krueger hmm. he stated if you look at this uh if you look at its history which i love horror I'd like us to find our own Freddy Krueger, our own jason and our own kind of iconic horror character and we haven't really honed in on that yet so the team is working hard on that because I think there's a real opportunity there. Um, of course, I came in the same interview with the talk of this, you know, mm -hmm. Fear Street standalone film. Um, now, you know, I don't, I don't think he was speaking about, you know, this film potentially having a new character right. that can become iconic. I think he's speaking kind of speaking kind of generally. General. But 
I do think it's interesting that um, that's something that, that's that's something that they're thinking about. Mm. Um, but I don't know if they should be doing all that. You don't think so? Ah, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just I don't know. Like he said, it's an opportunity, right? So I'm looking at it like, mm, how are you approaching this? Are you approaching right. this from like this genuine place of you actually wanting to create a character for people to love, or are you j- wanting to just maximize on money? Because we know oh, that. Right. Horror is known to making like you like know, they're just gonna slap something together and it's not gonna be margins. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, Netflix is one of them people that didn't want to pay them people. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. That's true. So they could take the approach to try to slap something together to try to you know sell merch and all that extra stuff. But um, you know, I'm all. Well, for, what do you think? Well, I'm all for more horror. You know, what I'm saying. I mean, so, like, I am too. If they but... can create a cool character, like a character that goes stupid hard, yeah. Like, I'm all on board. Right. Um, I'm not saying, like, they shouldn't try, but yeah. I'm just saying, as long as it comes from a good place, like, I'm thinking of, like, new characters that have become iconic. Okay, like, we recently had talked about the whole nun thing. Yeah, and how Valak. Right. And how Valak has become, like, this iconic character. Um, mm-hmm. But that, I feel like that wasn't by own purpose. Like Right. Like, they was, didn't set out to create. exactly. Yeah, because if you think about it, then... Valak really came. He was like, uh, all, he was the main villain of the Conjuring Two, but that wasn't revealed until later in the film, right? So like, uh, like, like you, like you're saying, they once they they didn't set out to be like, oh, we're trying to create an we're iconic creating, character, right? Exactly. Like it, Valak just kind of became. But she became that iconic to the point that. where you know he got his own right spinoff films and so on and so exactly. forth. Exactly. So, so that's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, I feel like it has to come from a, a genuine place right. and word that actually makes sense yeah yeah well hopefully they can figure something out yeah. and you know put something that's actually dope you know on the netflix on the tv screens uh we'll see how that goes um uh, but did you want to add anything to uh this uh standalone fear street oh film? i think that's a dope idea yeah. um like there there are so many stories that can be derived from the fear street um uh I don't even know what you want to call it, universe. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I think they should definitely do that, even if it becomes another trilogy or something like that, because I really liked the Fear Street movies. I think they did a really great job telling those stories. Right. Um, so I would like to see them do a standalone film or even just more of the same type. I, I would have been fine with that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm interested in seeing where they take that. Now, are you familiar with the books at all? Or? I didn't read them, but oh. I mean, I know that there are okay. <laughs> books. Okay, because I didn't, honestly, I didn't even know that they were books. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No clue. Yeah. yeah. So, like, even reading that interview, I was like, oh, I didn't, didn't know it was a book series. <laughs> like, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, I just thought there was something they put together for Netflix, but, you know, that's cool. So, and like you, I, I like the trilogy, so I'm cool with more standalone as long as it's, you know, written well and, mm-hmm. you know, put out with with some love and whatnot. Um, right. I'd be curious to think what, what y'all think about this, like, if any of the uh book series fans out there like if y'all, if y'all are familiar with the series let us know in the comments below which you know standalone book or what or what story that could do uh based off of the book series that you'd like to see uh on the you know netflix tv screens lastly y'all I wanted to give y'all a box office update before we head into uh this weekend especially because it's a wonderful knife is opening this weekend so we're going to start off here with five nights at freddy's and give y'all an update on that so right now, domestically, it's sitting at $117 million, and worldwide, it's sitting at $221 million. Wow, that's, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy numbers. Uh, now, Saw 10, that's sitting at uh, $52.7 million domestically and $100 million worldwide. And then Exorcist the Believer is sitting at $63.6 million domestic and $130 million worldwide. Now, what's crazy is you got the Ex- Exorcist the Believer. 130 million worldwide and Five Nights at Freddy's is already mm-hmm. approaching that number just in domestic. Yep. Uh domestic. You know, obviously it's well past, you know, both Saw 10 and Exorcist. Yeah. Uh, almost combined. Almost, yeah. Uh, for the worldwide crazy. number. But yeah. For, I mean, I think everyone knew that Five Nights at Freddy's gonna be big. Um I didn't know it was gonna be that big. But yeah, I think, I think people weren't expecting it to be this me, big. And then oh, well, we already talked about it. I think um through me is the fact that it's not just in theaters. So you can watch it at home. For and free. And not have to pay no extra. Well, not for free, but yeah. You know what I'm no saying? No extra premium price. Right. No extra premium prices. Like, and this is like still killing it. Like. Crazy. It's just insane. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. 
this that's a money maker because I think they only it was twenty. Their budget was only like twenty million yeah, some, or something yeah, like that. Some small, like yeah, twenty million. I think it's like twenty, like yep. and so they <laughs> definitely surpassed that. They and make, then so they, um, this gonna become a whole yeah like movie franchise. Like they're gonna go into like three, four, maybe even five. Like <laughs> with the numbers crazy. that it's doing, because I mean at this point. Like it's guaranteed that uh, Finance of Freddy's two or whatever they call that yeah. next sequel film, it's it's probably going to be even more than this. Probably because um, people are you know especially the the main audience, which is the fans of the games, mm-hmm. are already eating this up. So it's yeah. it's going to be crazy when the next one comes out. And I'm curious if they just de- if they decide for the sequel to do it uh, same day with the with oh, the Peacock, with Peacock release. Again. Yeah. Or if they'll do strictly theaters. Now they know like, oh, people go in the theaters to watch this. Yeah, that's, so I, that's I, I, a, I kinda wonder if yeah. it wasn't on streaming, how big would that number really be? And it would have been even crazy. <laughs> Cause we didn't go to the theater and watch it. No, we you know, didn't. we stayed at home, our son was watching it. Like Yeah. So I, I wonder how big that number could have been. And now I wonder if they're thinking that, like, oh, right. <laughs> the sequel was theaters only because we about to make stupid money off this. Uh, but let That's us know right. what y'all think uh, about uh, these box office numbers. Were you surprised by anything? Uh, especially Financial Freddy's X is the Believer. You know, of course, that came out and had, you know, got destroyed critically. And I feel like it's kind of evidence evident in the box office that people were just not. Yeah, this film at all. unfortunate. Yeah, so let us know in the comments, y'all, what y'all think about these, and let us know what you think or how you think the uh, It's a Wonderful Night film will do. Of course, that's opening this weekend. We went and saw that. We'll be doing a uh, a non spoiler review on that. Should already be on the channel if you're watching this. Go check our channel because that video should be up. We talk about our thoughts on It's a Wonderful Knife. But let us know down in the comments how you think that'll do this weekend because um, Based based off how we feel about it, yeah, I'm not gonna <laughs> go watch the video. yeah go watch the video, but I don't think I don't think it's gonna do big numbers. I don't know, uh, but we'll see, y'all. Let us know in the comments what y'all think about uh, all things box office right now. Well, that'll do it, y'all, for your end of the week horror news update. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, y'all, because we'll be giving you midweek and end of the week uh, horror news updates every week. So make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all things horror, y'all. Now, make sure you go and follow us on all of our social media channels as well, TikTok, IG, X. Follow us on all those channels. And then also visit our website, inlovewithhorror.com. Now, we also do a uh, podcast on Saturdays as well that covers like our like our, like our our main topics, just discussion topics like favorite holiday horror films, things like that. That comes out on Spotify and Apple. So make sure you subscribe to us over on there and leave us a review, a review while you're at it because that helps us get more visibility on those platforms. And as for this video, uh, let us know of, out of these stories, uh, what did you find interesting, shocking? Uh, what are you looking forward to? Let us know all that down in the comments below because we'd love to discuss that with y'all. Uh, but thank you so much for viewing this video and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.